We know that uh, women in tech have a hard time getting into a leadership position. But even if they have a hard time, they need to be strategic about it. So the one thing that Rosemary Kimwatu and her panelists are going to talk about is how can we think positively and strategically and have the, uh, a growth, growth mindset so that we can be able to grow the leadership of women once they get to a certain point in their career. So I'd like to introduce you to Rosemary Kimwatu. Rosemary, please take the stage. Perfect. It's an amazing morning today. Karibuni sana and glad to be here with my amazing, amazing, amazing panel of, um, you know, uh, women who, who just do phenomenal things in their careers. I'm going to ask each and every one of them to just introduce themselves. Uh, we can start with um, uh, Umoma. Umoma. Thanks. Where's me? Hello, everyone. Such a pleasure to be here. My name is Unoma Adeyemi, and I'm the co-founder of Wentos, a global online community to nurture the careers of women in tech, specifically to this topic. So this topic is very dear to my heart. I'm happy to share some of my wisdom with you, and I look forward to this conversation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Unoma. We really look forward to the great insights that you're going to share. Um, next, I'm going to talk to Imelda. Hi, Imelda. Hi, maybe. Thank you for great. having me. <laughs> great to see you here. Great to see you here. Yeah. Thank you, yeah. guys. My name is Imel Dangunzu. Um, I'm a market development lead with MasterCard Strategy Growth in Kenya. Uh, I'm part of a global team that, uh, you know, looks after building technology solutions and scaling them within the marginalized communities, something that's really close to my heart. So I am happy to be talking to you guys today and happy also to share some of my wisdom, especially in strategically creating a career in tech. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very, very much, Imelda. Uh, next, we can have uh, Pauline. Pauline, you're muted. The challenges of technology. <laughs> yeah, so good morning. Good morning. My name is Pauline Kiraida. I'm the founder and director of Talent Guru at 254, an organization that's helping people take uh, uh, ownership of their careers. Um, re I've recently authored a book called Owning Your Career. So it's all about careers. Um, having been in HR for 21 years in corporate Kenya, and now five years in entrepreneurship. So we do executive leadership coaching, career coaching, and we have a, a leadership program for the youth as well as um, professionals around careers and only their careers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and I think uh, finally, I, I don't know if she's in the room, um, uh, finally, we'll have uh, Evelyn, Evelyn Kamau Migwe. Uh, so if Evelyn is not here, I think um, I'm just going to jump straight to the question. And, um, you know, uh, I'm happy that the panelists, they are very passionate about it. I guess for me, it's also one of those things. Uh, there's, there's being a woman, and then there's being a woman in tech. And then there's a career, and then not just having a career, but even scaling the ladder. And I'm happy that, you know, we're going to get uh, a cheat sheet from today's amazing panel on how we as women can, can move forward. So the first question, how do women in technology adapt to change in tabular time? Imelda, give us the experience. What 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 can we as women look into? I'm, I'm happy you called it a cheat sheet. Uh, we'll see if that works eventually. But <laughs> let I think I have two pointers for, for women. And, and the thing is, we're all learning. It doesn't matter at what point in your career you are. We and, and I liked what my friend earlier said, Maureen, in, in her panel. She said that stay hungry for information. I think that's one of the things I'm going to reiterate because people sort of tend to think when you get to a certain career level, it ends there. It's, 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 you know, one of my earlier mentors said, when you get to a point, uh, when you achieve a goal, move the goal to the next goal. So we must always try to keep moving towards and learning how to scale. So I, I think I have two pointers for the ladies uh, joining today. One of it is keep developing yourself. I don't think we can overemphasize that point. Uh, take advantage of um, there's so many free courses that have been offered by all the platforms that we have socially and even professionally. 
and also look inside yourself and see what is it that I can invest in myself. Set, set aside some money to study, to, you know, go for courses even if they're not free. And just make sure you're ready for this because nobody knows the future. But if you have already these resources and you, you've invested in them, then it means, you, you know, you're ready that if anything happens, you can you can be noticed and you, can, you have already the information that uh, you can leverage on. I think my, my last point on that question, people, and we've talked a lot about this for so long. I made a joke yesterday during our dry run, and I said that the, the, the world has no space for quiet women. And I know that can be taken out of context, but I exactly mean what I say. Make sure you you overcome the imposter syndrome. And I, Alia Laura gave us, you know, a cheat sheet on how to do that. But shout, uh, say you're here and you want to take advantage of that. And just before is quoted, uh, let me quantify that by saying it doesn't mean quiet with personality. We have a lot of us uh, who are who are introverts, but we've seen introverts, you know, raise their voices and say when they want to say and their their opinions can be taken in decision making. So be visible is what I'm going to end this at. Onoma, do you agree that the world has no space for quiet women? <laughs> Um, absolutely, hundred percent agree. Right, and I particularly like uh, you know those points which she added that no, 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 no. We are introverts. I'm an introvert. But it doesn't mean my voice, doesn't mean my opinion is not capable of shaping a change that is needed in the situation at work, whatever it is that you're working on. So yes, I do agree on that. And um, just to buttress on what Inelda mentioned on how to, you know, adapt to change. Just, let's just create that mind. Uh, at this point, I'll allow Paula. Karibu sana, Paula. Uh, give us your insight. First, do you give, did you give uh, Imelda a thumbs up or? <laughs> yes, 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 I totally agree. <laughs> I totally agree. Um, yes, I, I, I truly believe the only way you can influence is through sharing your thought process. Yeah, so, the error for us to keep quiet and not talk uh, in board meetings, I think that that error is over. Yeah, so the only way we can influence is by sharing our opinions and sharing our experiences. So just to add on to what I think about women adapting to change, because right now we are smart in the center of change. I believe, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a true believer in personal development and constant learning. Yeah, so I actually train women uh, through the Ascent Self Leadership Program, and this is where I tell them that for for one to progress, you have to have a good uh, eye on the industry that you are in. So you have to be constantly learning. You have to be constantly exposed to the changes that are happening in your industry, and understanding where the trends are moving to. But the other key thing is to also acquire skills that will enable you to easily pivot. In case there's a shift in your in your industry, you need to be able to have the ability to shift yeah, or pivot way before the changes happen. Yeah. So I think these changes are happening in all industries, even not just tech. Yeah. So it's a general principle uh, in terms of for for most careers, huh? for you to keep up uh, abreast and to keep relevant, you have to be upskilling constantly. And then the other key thing is also have a clear uh, understanding of your industry yeah thank you thank you so much Paula and I think you've actually just led us to our next part of the conversation and it was about you know uh, for tracking our thinking like about thinking about the future while staying ahead where you are Imelda give us the insight I think as a as a career woman who's been able to you know uh, pivot uh, scale these ladders how do we fast track our thinking where we still are uh, do what you still need to get done, and then plan ahead to stay, you know, plan and then also stay ahead of the game. Uh, what yeah. advice do you give to women? And I keep saying, the panel that I have today is amazing because ladies are cheap sheep. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for speaking French. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think um, I think for me, it's possible recognizing that change is the only constant, as, as Paula said. Just said right, uh, and 
and that cannot be more spoken than the year 2020 and 2021 that we've all experienced, right? And the fact that I think as, as tech personalities beyond women, we start like two meters ahead because the fact that we are in tech, it simply means we have dynamic personalities because tech is about dynamism, it's changing every day. So first of all, recognizing that already we have that capability in ourselves to really um, change very quickly as, as personalities, but also knowing and being psychologically ready that things will change. We cannot, we cannot be in a, in, a, in a status quo. I think it helps because then we, we help ourselves be agile. If something comes into the workplace and you're told, you know, you have to, we have to close down this business, and you know, pivot quickly to this. And as a woman in tech, you must be ready psychologically to be that agile, be that leader who takes advantage of such opportunities. And also seeing change as not a difficulty, but as an opportunity. Because I remember when I wanted to change um, from from my my telecom career to payment. It was one of the things I struggled with. I've never done anything in payments. What's going to happen? But I had this thing in me that this job is exactly what I want to do because it sort of mixes technology and impact. And it is something that, you know, I, I had a lot of passion in. And so, you know, I, I took it up and I said, I'll do it. Even if it means a few years, a few, a few months to learn, you know, the payment lingo, then I'm ready to do it because it's what I want. So I, I think that psychological readiness and preparing yourself and no, we nobody knows everything, you know. <laughs> Everybody is struggling to understand and do something. So I, I think it's, it's more psychological preparedness, but, you know, coming with all these things we're talking about, develop yourself, keep a, a good coach and mentor, all those things that will support towards that. And maybe I want to let you know, Evelyn, that, uh, sorry, uh, Rosemary, that Evelyn joined before we go to the next question. Ah, well, 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 welcome back, Evelyn. And uh, uh, it was good to see that you that you're back. Um, I'm trying to trace you on my screen, but it, it, it's okay. So, Evelyn, I think we're having a very healthy conversation. Yes. In terms of um, in terms of how do you fast track your thinking, and 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 uh, staying ahead. And we've had very beautiful insights from Imelda mm. regards to upskilling and that change is the only constant constant. And I think. For me, the, the amazing thing I've picked up of this is the empathy part. Uh, we are all struggling. <laughs> you know, uh, I think we will always we always want to go, uh, you know, speak about the win, speak yes. about the things we're doing so well. Evelyn, what are your thoughts? No, first, I have to agree. And I hope everybody can hear me first. I have to agree with what uh, Imelda has said. And uh, most importantly, I think the biggest challenge for us women is having access to the information having access to the knowledge, but also having that targeted support system. Without that targeted support system, remember we have challenges where there are cultural challenges um, and other challenges in the dynamics where women are not viewed to be competent to be able to do certain, certain roles. So this being a key challenge then becomes, we have to be very proactive in making sure that do we remain tech savvy? And if I look at the discussion, how do we ensure we are staying, staying ahead of the game? How do we ensure that we're still upskilling? Because there are huge gaps. And if you look at the surveys, they have diff different, like Mankinsey survey stated, around 40, 60 to 140 million women have to rethink their strategy. Maybe even have to learn more skills, more than the men, to be able to progress. So I totally agree with what the team, uh, what Imelda is saying, and even what uh, Pauline has alluded to. And those are some of the strategies that women have to employ in order to remain and stay ahead of the game. And Evelyn, now, now that you're speaking about those strategies, how, how do you look around and see, you've talked about a support system. Yes. How, how do I point out that this should be my support system? This is the kind of, you know, person I should, and, and work in dynamic environments. We work in places where, uh, work even home, even family. There's always uh, yeah. a challenge or the other need to step. How do you quickly identify this yeah. is my support system? What so, advice do you give to women? No, definitely. So that's a very good question. So there are different approaches in identifying a support system. There's targeted support system at work where you find some companies have pods. We call them pods, power of differences. 
and that alludes to diversity and inclusion conversation. And their agenda is really to promote anybody who's you know, embracing the uniqueness of the different women in those organizations, being able to identify their unique talents and skills, and then moving them to positions where they can actually be seen and take up new challenges. The other support system is more like a God-given support system. You have a family, you have kids, you have a husband. But have women done a good job in selling their vision to their family? You know, being able to have that buy-in from your husband, that's an excellent support system because these are the people who promote and stand you and work with you. But ultimately, you look also at laws, you look at governments, you know, any bills that are towards uh, women empowerment, all those are support system. But I want to speak more, more closely to the organizational targeted support system. Within that, you can identify different models either within your organization or externally within your, your market industry. So that's where I believe Imelda alluded to mentorship and coaching. And then also within the organization, are there groups or teams that support uh, women initiatives, that support growth and career growth? Because that is when now you can have access to that information. And as I said earlier, we have to continue to embrace mobility and flexibility at work and being adaptable. So then if something changes, how do we ensure that we are remaining agile in that, in that process? Thank you so much. And at this point, Paula, we don't want you quiet for too long. <laughs> Chime in. OK, so to allude to uh, what um, has been spoken about the networking, there are, I think, very critical relationships that we need to nurture so that we can grow our careers yeah? intentionally. Yeah, so we have internal networks that we have to develop as well as also external ones. Yeah, so you can be well known within the organization, but if you are not well known in the industry, obviously your mobility will be hindered. Yeah, so there are certain relationships uh, that I feel are critical. And uh, I think there are skills that we are not usually exposed to, yeah, and, um, has, and it has contributed to hindering a lot of people's careers. So I think networking is critical, and especially who you're networking with, yeah, for your growth in your career. So industry uh, leaders, yeah, industry thought leaders, people who you feel have earned their, their space and authority to speak in certain areas, those are people you need to look out for and you need to know who they are in your industry that you can network with. Thank God for social media, everybody now is accessible, so you can actually network. Yeah, so nobody is not accessible now. Yeah, and uh, social media also helps you even just understand their thought process and how they think. Yeah, so there are many ways you can be mentored as well as uh, you can also take them as role models. You may not even interact with them directly, but they are already interested in your thought process. I also think uh, having a mentor, me being a, a product of mentorship, having had a mentor for 20 years, I feel it actually fast tracked my career path. Yeah, so having a mentor, somebody who has gone before you will always give you those tips, yeah, that will actually ensure that you will not make the same mistakes and you end up fast tracking your, your career. Then we also have sponsors, and which is also a critical thing, and not sponsor the Kenyan way, but sponsors <laughs> in the sense of people who can be able to vouch for your career, yeah, and your credibility as a professional. And um, it's critical, especially for women in tech, yeah, because we know that technology is heavily male dominated. So you will, uh, you will definitely need people who can actually vouch for you. In those, uh, in those meetings where decisions are being made. Yeah? So I actually believe that we are. there's a point in your career, it's about your skill set, but now there's a point when you get to, and for me it was a realization and I got to the three suit. It's not about your uh, it's not about your your qualifications, it's actually about your networking skills. So there's a shift Please. that has to happen. Yeah. Pauline, yeah. I want you to speak as a, as a HR um, consultant. And at this point, and even before critical for women, I want, how do you create that balance? How do you network internally? You can be big in an industry, but also you must also win within the space you're in. 
What advice do you have for women for internal mobility within an organization? Actually, before you re- you move to the industry, you need to win internally. Yeah, you need to be able to win internally first. So how do you network internally? Your co-workers, eh? the people who you think do not matter, those are the same people who will actually give and vouch for you. So first of all, start where you are, your, your colleagues, yeah? It's about how you relate, how you share information. The era of hoarding information is over, yeah? Everything is accessible. So it's more of how you add value with the information you have. So are you somebody who uh, relates well with others? Are you able to add value? in the meetings that you are invited to. Don't attend meetings if you're not going to say anything, yeah? So please, be seem to be always adding value. And for me, I always say, when you're working in an organization, never ever hold a position where once you're done, you cannot say what you did there, yeah? Never move, never ever think of moving if you have no tangible evidence of what you did while you are there. So every time you're in an organization, just look at how you're adding value understand where the problems of the organization uh, organization are, see, that is where you're going to be adding value. So win internally fast, that's how you're going to win industry-wide. Yeah? So don't move to the industry before you have won where you are. And then the thing is, you're building social capital. I can tell you, like for me, I, I was able to pivot in five industries. Yeah? So I started in um, the NGO, I went to Telco. Five? Yeah! 21 years yeah, is a long time. You're the queen of agility. You're the, no, you're the queen of agility. Years is a long time. Right? 21 years is a long time to work. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> so I did NGO, I did telco, I did retail, and then I also did media. Yeah, I did the two large media houses in Kenya. But the thing is, uh, and now I see, now when I'm in business, actually my employees of 20 years ago are now coming back to me. Can you imagine? So you have to build social capital. That is where you start winning. Yeah, so wherever, whichever space you find yourself in, add value, and then now that's networking. Those are the same people who will vouch for you wherever you are. Yeah. Mm. Maybe as we wait for Rosemary, I just wanted to throw a curveball, uh, wondering, are women targeting low-wage jobs? Uh, is there a gap? Uh, in, in, in ensuring that they can target the higher, uh, higher wage jobs. I, I don't know what you, f- you feel about that, um, um, Pauline. I feel um, women, women um, are, are ambitious to an extent. Yeah, to an extent. Yeah, to the extent where it does not inconvenience them. You know, the higher you go, the career ladder, the more the, it will inconvenience you. The more it will take you away from your family, the more sacrifices you have to make. Yeah, You have to be waking up at maybe five yeah, and you get back home late. So you, if you have a family, that's the trade-off. So I feel, and even statistics have actually shown, women grow, uh, in terms of promotion, they gain more promotions until middle level. And then they decide to stagnate there because they don't want to get up to the higher key level role because it demands more yeah and they know that that the trade-off is there so i think that's the balance and i think that's where we will have to look at the work uh, flexibility and how we are how flexible we are in incorporating women into the workspace because i think there's a huge sacrifice in terms of how we are, we have to do that trade-off between parenting the roles we hold at home and also the roles we are holding in the office. So for most women, they prefer not to go up to, uh, up the sea level because they know that sacrifice is there. Yeah, so I think that's, what happen- that's what's happening. It's not that they want lower wage. I think it's the trade-off. And I've had many, many examples of where women have gone for those roles and they've actually had to trade off mm-hmm. either their marriages mm-hmm. or the women had to sacrifice in terms of their uh, um, parenting role, in terms of their kids, so they've lost out in a lot of milestones for their children. So that's why you find more and more women are hesitant about pushing, pushing it to, uh, to go up to the, to, to the sea level. And then the ones who get there, when they find that what it, it's all about, they, they retreat. Yeah. And I think and that's a, yeah. Sorry. Go right ahead. Okay, please. <laughs> 
I wanted to chime in also, and 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 I know uh, Sheryl Sandberg wrote this book about cleaning, and there's been quite a number of critics critics on on her approach. But she says something very profound, and she says if you think about it, so most of the top women CEOs actually have families and husbands, and contrary to most belief, is that people trade off, you know, their families, but there is a way, and, and the challenge for her is it's not enough, right? But how can we then have the, the, the diversity and inclusion discussion with our, pro, our our organization structures, so then mm-hmm. we realize that women want to do better, but they don't have the capacity to do better because they have all this baggage running mm-hmm. about. So probably a challenge for women in leadership positions to try and create policies and structures that can actually support that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it, it's it's an interesting conversation and it's all sorts of mm-hmm. uh, you know thinking about it. Yeah. Okay. So, so ladies, let let's agree that we've agreed that we're not staying small and we're gonna develop a growth mindset. So, Sidney, yeah. I want to ask you, how how do we use a growth mindset to solve difficult problems in the workforce? We've agreed that we're not going to be content. We're not gonna play two. We're not gonna not reach out for the seafood. How then do you utilize a growth mindset to solve now the day to day problems that come with you know uh, managing the the the, the higher task? How do we make use of that? And I'll have also Imelda and Pauline chime in immediately after you. Okay. So, so how I look at it, and this I'll, I'll answer purely out of experience. Um, the growth mi- mindset has to be first internally from you. When you look at your ambition, and these are elements that every woman has. Every woman has ambitions. They have dreams. And then you also look at how does that align to my goals and how does that align to my skills? Is there anything that I need to skill up on? Are there any gaps? So it's very, very important to first look inwardly, even as you're setting up on that growth mindset. Then look outwardly. Is the environment I'm in supporting my my dream? Is it supporting my vision? And what gaps are there? What do I need to work on? So these are very critical steps. And a lot of the times, as women, we are always giving. We are always putting ourselves out there for other people, as as, as, uh, Pauline earlier said, trading off. But when you're very clear on what your ambition is, what your journey is, and, and that's where you actually, at the beginning of the year, you agree, these are the... You know, they call it vision board, but these are the items I want to achieve this year. Do I have the right support system to achieve these items? Do I have the right skills? But most importantly, do you have access? Do you have access to the people who will help you achieve those goals? And do you also have access to the material, all the technology, all the training, and the funding, again, also financially as well? Uh, those are various elements. So that growth mindset also has to be very supported by whatever ecosystem that you're working within, so that it always motivates you as a woman. It always motivates you in technology, especially in the IT industry, to keep pushing yourself, to be able to get out of your comfort zone. So one of the things personally that I would speak to is uh, I've really, really uh, worked hard in ensuring that you have um, an internal mentor um, looking at the courses that add value and complement your job. You know, it, it doesn't have to be an IT course, it could be a management course, a strateg- strategic management course, an MBA, anything, because all those are learning elements. And then also personally taking on challenges that are not within your job description. Very important. It could look like it's a lot of work. You're taking in a lot of tasks. But those are challenges that shape you to be able to look at a broader business, uh, you know, broader angle within your business, within your organization, and allowing you to have that growth mon- mindset. And lastly, um, is, is just avoiding limiting yourself to the expectations of the people. A lot of times people have perceptions, and especially for women in tech, people will always have perceptions about what your capabilities are, uh, who you are, how you are. It, it goes as simple as how you speak and how you understand. But when you just decouple from thinking about this is what people perceive of me by and then looking inwardly, inwardly and saying, this is who I am, and this is what I am going to achieve. It really promotes that growth mindset as a woman in tech. I think that is golden. Decouple mm-hmm. from external perceptions, mm-hmm. see yourself and project that. Imelda, give mm-hmm. us more. I know, that's just completely golden as you said. So I, I'll give two tips 
something that I learned earlier in the year about negative mentors. So the, we, we all talk about mentorship, but there's this concept of looking within the society and seeing people who have done the wrong thing or veered off and then using those experiences to say this is not what I want for me. So what are the lessons that I can learn from her journey or his journey that I can correct so I don't end up to that level? I think that's, that's, that's something that we, we forget to say or a lot of people don't know about it, but it's, it's extremely good for us to do that, maybe selfish, but you know we learn from people's experiences, right? The second thing I'm going to talk about is about to bring some hope. So we, we talk about uh, looking for an environment that supports our growth mindset, right? But what is it within our sphere of influence that we can do as ourselves? So I learned about, you know, keeping a brainstorm group, which is a close group of professionals who are diverse enough to learn from them, but have the same dreams or the same values. And then having completely honest discussions with them and say, I'm struggling with this. I thought I'll get my promotion this year, but it didn't come through. What is it that I did wrong? And then your your peers, so we could call them peers, but they are more than that because they support you. You learn from them. You exchange ideas. You ask for contact within the industry. They introduce you to coaches and mentors. So it, it's another way of networking, but also something very valuable that can help you in the in the in in your you know, in your growth mindset and helping you achieve those goals because everybody is diverse. So you will have the men that you say really do well in the tech industry and you can learn a lot from them when you have, you know, that very close knit uh, relationship with them. So uh, let me share those two and I think uh, they can really help, uh, especially younger women professionals in IT as they grow up. Thank you, Melda. I'm, I'm seriously thinking through my brainstorm group and uh, who will include in that. And I'm hoping that the ladies in this conversation are actually taking notes. For me, my pen has been on overdrive, and it's so critical for these nuggets. So these are things that you use on a day-to-day basis. Paula, yeah. over to you. Okay. How do you use a growth mind- mindset as we, you know, as we scale? Yes. So for me, I look at, so the key differentiator between a fixed and a growth mindset is just basically how you look at failure. Yeah, I think that is a key differentiator. Yeah, so for people with a growth mindset, you look at failure as learning. Mm. Yeah, so for me, for the longest time, I always say, and any of you, if you've ever tried to be in business, uh, losing money is part of the, it's part of the game. Eh? But uh, for many people, when you lose money, when they lose money, what they do, uh, for most people, what they'll do is they stop. Yeah, so now the thing is, for me, how I flip it and how I reframe it is anytime you lose money, look at it as school fees. Yeah? Mm. It's learning. Yeah? So for me, I always say and use that mindset also with the workspace. Anytime you find that there's failure, always look for the learning. Look for the lesson because you've learned one other way mm. of not doing it. Yeah? And growth happens in the doing. Yeah? So every time you are doing, you're growing closer to your solution. You find another new ways of doing things, yeah, towards achieving your objective. Yeah, so I think for me, it's just how you flip that mindset. Anytime you have challenges, you have to find that uh, strength, because there's also strength, the need for strength. Eh? You need to get the strength to reframe and look at what you, have, you can learn from that failure. And then, as they say, you have to keep failing forward. As you're failing forward, you're going closer to obtaining uh, your goal or reaching to your goal. Yeah, so I think that's the critical thing about the growth mindset. Yeah, it's how we take failure and how quickly we recover from it. We, we don't have a lot of minutes left, but we wouldn't do justice to our audience if we wouldn't talk about the challenges that we face. You've talked about, you know, school fees, failing forward. And you know, the, you've talked about the, almost the process and the recovery. But I'd like a very candid conversation from, from you ladies. What are some of the challenges that women face when it comes to getting ahead in IT? What are those challenges that give you the school fees moment? And then how do you handle that? Okay. Imelda, 
no, let's have let's have Evelyn go first. Evelyn will not <laughs> listen to you in a while. Wow. <laughs> um, wow. Oh, sorry, you Evelyn. Multiple... Have, I, have I thrown you in too fast? <laughs> no, it's fine. It's okay. I'm I, I'm a proud mother of four, and I'm also a wife. But on top of that, I'm a career woman. And there could be multiple elements to look at when you talk about challenges. So this um, requires, especially when you're multitasking at work, at home, it requires a lot of structure and requires a lot of planning. But the biggest challenge, in my opinion, is being a, it's having that, um, I, would, I don't want to say supportive, but having that system at work that allows you that flexibility. Then that flexibility allows you to focus on your work, but also not dropping balls. Uh, when you're juggling so many uh, uh, jobs and you're still wanting to progress into leadership roles, the biggest challenge you have are hindrances, especially when people uh, at work or the ecosystem doesn't feel you have the capability you know, um, how will she manage to do this? She's still running her home. Or she's still, you know, she's, she's working too hard to, 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 be, to, to be seen at work. But w the biggest challenge is if your management is not sold to it, if you do not have that internal advocate within the organization, it really comes off as one of the biggest challenges I've seen. A lot of us, and including myself, have prospered quite immensely when you have somebody holding your hand up, uh, especially at work, and when you have a team, teamwork, especially in the office, people who understand and are able to move out of the work environment and sympathize with you, maybe not necessarily empathize, but even sympathize with you in terms of, of, of if there are any challenges at home. I mean, coming from a pandemic, we had scenarios where our own management, even us managing others, needed to be quite flexible, needed to think out of the box so that we're not limiting the capabilities of our colleagues or employees, but instead empowering, encouraging, and motivating them. But also when you have an organization that is thinking, how do I bring this, make it easier for Evelyn to be able to achieve her task, then that then stops being a challenge. So um, I, th I think for me that that's my take. Thank you, thank you so much, Evelyn. I'm, I'm also a mother of four, and that's amazing nugget. <laughs> uh, so over to you, Melda. Yeah, um, so I think one of the challenges we've had, and I want to believe we're starting to address that uh, quite uh, strongly this time, is for entry level women in IT, not having people to look up to. You know, like you're all saying, I'm a mother of four, I'm a mother of four, I am a mother of two. So if we start to tell our stories and to say, oh, I've been able to do this while still managing my marriage and my family life uh, well, then we may as well create that opportunity to show the younger women who are coming up that it's actually possible. You can scale up the ladder, you can change jobs, you can do this in between, you know, your, your pregnancy. And, and some of these things we face are, are very important to, to women, but they are also opportunities to learn and to push our, ourselves forward. So I like that um, that's a problem. And, and I see the platform that Hanovision is creating, for example, is, is giving women a platform to tell their story, to shout, and it goes back to what we said earlier, even being visible as women in, in IT is not for ourselves alone. It's also, you know, creating that hand and, and pulling back up people and saying, um, there's a challenge. Women don't believe it's possible, but we are saying that we've done it and we continue to do it. So then we address that challenge collectively as a society because some of these things are quite cultural. Uh, Evelyn has just talked about bias. It's there. It is absolutely there and we can't do away with it. We, people will ask, wait, I can't give you a job when you're pregnant, you know. What will happen when you give the baby, you go away for, like our company, six months, and, and that's a fact. And it's a challenge for the organization because they have to find somebody to sit up, you know, in my position. So, so those challenges are there, but let's look at them as 
first of all, what is it that we as women can do to address them for the society? But also as leaders in our respective organizations, are we making the right noise? Are we shouting? Are we saying, no, fix this at this level? Because in, it addresses the bias uh, question. It addresses the non-visibility challenge that we have. So I, I, I will end it up there and say it's these challenges, for sure, as women will face them. But there's also solutions to solve them. And, and ladies, as we come to the end of it, I'll have Pauline start with her parting shot. A few, just a sentence or two, that is your overall women, uh, message to women today as we, as we end this. I always like ending with a parting shot. So Pauline, over to you. Pauline, then uh, Evelyn, then Imelda. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so for me, I would uh, say to all the ladies who are listening that your career is actually your own responsibility. I would urge you to take uh, charge yeah, and uh, do as many personal development uh, sessions that you want to do yeah, because that's the only way you will grow. But the key thing for you to grow and to influence yeah, is when you actually are able to communicate and speak your opinion. So when you get an opportunity to sit on the table, please make sure you use those opportunities. The only way you can influence is by sharing your views. Yeah, and uh, uh, adding value to the organizations that you're working for. Yeah, also remember that the standards are usually higher for women as opposed to women. Uh, performance standards, we are held to a higher standard as opposed to men. So just always know that you have all your ducks in, the row, uh, in a row. Yeah, anytime when you're going to sit into a row, ensure that you do an exemplary job because you actually setting the precedent for others. Yeah, so always, always, wherever, whichever space you are in, always leave a mark. Yeah, and now there are opportunities, there are great resources now available, so women, we can be able to be the best version of ourselves. Yeah, so this will be given to us, we have to take it. Yeah, as they say, power is never given. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's great. Thank you so much, Paula. Imelda. The, the final nuggets of wisdom uh, in two or three sentences and then over yeah. to me. Yeah, so, so I, I'll speak on terms of diversion and inclusion. I, I think this is going to be the next big thing, right? And and, and corporate, even in, in Kenya, they are really creating systems to make sure that they're including women. So my parting shot, the opportunity has been created for us. As mm. black women in tech, we must grab it. We cannot be left behind. Mm. Ladies, it's all about grabbing. I think we need to have another webinar on how to grab. <laughs> so, um, my parting shot is simple. As women, and in this industry that is always moving fast, you have to absolutely stay true to yourself. Regardless of, you know, the naysayers, regardless of the task ahead, Regardless of the challenges, stay true to yourself and aim, always aim. And I'll speak on ambition. And especially now in the age of automation, very soon you'll see robotics, AI coming and replacing a lot of these jobs. And women alone are going to go first. So stay true to yourself, stay focused and aim, always aim. And I'll borrow what Pauline said, the skills. It's very important to invest in yourself to go to the next level and probably work five times harder than the men in this industry. Thank you. Thank you, guys. It's been an amazing panel. Thank you for what I can call very candid conversations. And I walked into this thing when the ladies uh, leave this particular panel, and even our audience uh, stop listening to us, let them have uh, a cheat sheet. And I think we have delivered our cheat sheet. So uh, over back to CIO, it's been an absolute pleasure. I'm Rosemary Koet Kimwatu, uh, Public Policy Manager at Safaricom. On a day-to-day -day basis, I'm a lawyer in tech, and so happy to engage with all of you. Asante sana. <laughs>